Now in this discussion, this will be a continuation of what we have discussed regarding percentage composition, empirical formula, and molecular formula. Now in number one, we are given this set of percentages regarding sa isang substance na kung saan kukunin natin ang kanyang empirical formula. So we have these percentages for hydrogen, chlorine, and oxygen. The first step is to determine the weight. Now, given man yung weight or hindi, it will be better to assume that the weight is always 100 grams. Kasi, para mas madali na lang nagawing grams yung mga percentages. In this case, kapag ang ginawa natin na weight is 100 grams, we're simply going to cancel yung mga percent at papalitan natin ng grams. Now, kapag nakuha na natin yung mga grams nila, by removing the percentages, we're going to divide them with their atomic weight na kung saan ito ay makikita sa periodic table of elements. Now, for hydrogen, it is 1.01 grams per mole. Remember na lahat ng atomic weight na kinuha sa predictable, ang unit will be grams per mole. Para makansal yung grams, so that means 1.472 divided by its atomic weight, which is 1.01, this equal to 1.4574. So, 1.4574 mole. Kapag mole ang ating kinukuha, Kapag mole, we should always make use of four decimal places para mas accurate yung makukuha nating value. Kasi kapag gumamit tayo ng two decimal places, magkakaroon tayo ng problem in computing for the empirical formula. So, mas magiging accurate ang ating data kapag gumamit tayo ng four decimal places. Next naman is we have chlorine which is 51.787 divided by 35.45. Remember, lahat ng mga ginagamit natin pang divide na value, lahat yun na inobtain sa ating predictable of elements. So, it is 1.4608 mole. Next, we have oxygen. 46.741 divided by 16 grams per mole. It is equal to 2.9213 mole. Ngayon naman, kapag nakuha na natin yung mole ng bawat element, we're going to determine the lowest value. At gagamitin, gagamitin natin yun pang divide sa lahat. So, in this case, yung, sa, yung kay hydrogen yung pinakamababa. So, divided by 1.4574 mole, lahat ng mga mole nila ay makakancel. So, this will become the hydrogen will become 1. Chlorine is considered as 1. And then for oxygen, so 2.9213 divided by 1.4574. It is equal to 2. Yung mga nakuha nating values, ibig sabihin niyan, yun yung bilang ng atom ng bawat substance. So, for hydrogen, isa. Hindi na tayo maglalagay ng 1 kasi nagsulat tayo ng element so it is considered as 1. For chlorine, isa din. For oxygen, dalawa. So, this is now our empirical formula. Lahat ng mga nakukuha natin using this step is your empirical formula. Next, let's move on to number 2. This is K, is 26.581. Kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, kapag naka-percent siya, may given man na weight or wala, we are going to assume that the weight is 100 grams para madaling alisin yung percent. So, this will become 26.581 grams. This will become 35.349 grams. And then, this will become 38.0 seven zero grams we are going to determine their atomic weight for potassium number 19 is a predictable it is 39.1 grams per mole for chromium number 24 is a predictable it is 52 grams per mole and then for oxygen it is 16 grams per mole makakansal uli yung grams so that means 26.581 divided by 39.1 is equal to 
0.6798 mole. Next, kay chromium, 35.349 divided by 52 grams per mole is equal it is equal to 0 0.6798 mole next we have 38.070 divided by 16 it is equal to 2.3794 mole. The next step is to determine the lowest value doon sa mga na-compute nating mole. Turns out na pareho sila ni potassium at ni chromium. So, divided by 0 0.6798 mole. Now, since mole din ang unit ng ating divisor, makakansal na yung mole. So, your final answer will be unitless. So, K now is equal to 1 CR is also equal to 1. And next, we have 2.3794 divided by 0 0.6798. 3.5. As you can see here, ang value na nakuha natin kapag dinivide natin yung mole ni oxygen sa mole ng either ni potassium or ni chromium, ang lumabas is 3.5. Now, ang 3.5 ay masyado malayo sa 3 at masyado din siyang malayo sa 4. It is in between 3 and 4. So, hindi natin siya pwedeng i-round up. Pwede lang tayo mag-round up kapag ang unit nat ay kapag ang value obtained natin is 0.9 or pwede tayo mag-round down kapag ang value ng ating uh, nakuha is 0.1 and below. Ito naman ay 3.5. So, what we are going to do is to find a number, the lowest number na pwede natin i-multiply sa lahat ng element na kung saan magiging whole number lahat sila. So, kapag may i-multiply kang number, i-multiply mo sa lahat, hindi lang sa isa. So, what number should we use in order to get a whole number na whole number lahat ng mga element? So, in this case, magiging times 2. Pwedeng 4. Pwedeng 6, pwedeng 8, yun nga lang kasi yung smallest whole number ang kukunin natin. So, this times, ang ating potassium ay magiging 2, ang chromium ay magiging 2, ang oxygen ay magiging 7. So, that means the chemical formula is K2Cr2O7. Ngayon naman, I will give you another example. Paano kapag ang lumabas, nung dinivide mo ngayon, yung mole sa lowest value. So, for example, ang lumabas is 1, 1, and then 1.25. Masyadong malayo yung 1.25 sa 1 para i-convert, ay para i-round down natin siya sa 1. So, kapag ganito yung mga values na na-obtain natin, hahanap tayo ng number na kung saan magiging whole number lahat sila. At make sure na yun yung kanyang lowest term. Now, in this case, since 0.25 yung decimal place, pwede natin siyang i-multiply sa 4. Para magiging whole number. So, ibig sabihin, yung 1 magiging 4. Tapos, yung 1.25 ay magiging 5. So, ito ngayon yung magiging subscript ng bawat element. Another example. Okay. So, for example, nung dinivide mo yung mole ng bawat element doon sa lowest uh, value, ito ang lumabas 1.33, 1 and then 2 what number can we use it to multiply lahat ng mga values na maging whole number lahat sila at dapat yung lowest term so in this case 0.33 pwede natin siyang i-multiply sa 3 para maging 0.99, that is close to 1 diba so 1.33 times 3 is equal to 4 this will become 3 and this will become 6. So, ito ngayon yung magiging subscript ng bawat element. So, ganun ang gagawin natin kapag sila in nasa 0 0.25, 0 0.33, 0.5, or 0.75, hanap tayo ng number na pwede i-multiply sa kanilang lahat para maging whole number silang lahat. Kasi hindi tayo pwede magkaroon ng subscript na kung saan 
ang kanyang, ay hindi tayo pwede magkaroon ng substance sa so kung saan ang kanyang subscript ay may decimal place. It should be a whole number. So, paano kapag 0.75 naman? So, sa so compute is 1.75, tapos 1, tapos 2. For example, yan yung na-compute natin. Nung dinivide natin yung mga mole ng bawat element doon sa lowest value. So, si 1.75, ang pwedeng gamitin sa kanya ay 4. Okay, so 1.75 times 4 is equal to 7. This will become 4 and this will become 8. So ito yung magiging coefficient, um, ito yung magiging subscript nila ng mga bawat element. Okay, now let's go to number 3. Now, in the number 3, it is different from number 1 and number 2 in that, so number 3, hinahanap ang empirical at molecular formula. Kapag ang hinahanap ay empirical at molecular, uh, empirical formula lang, gawin natin yung the usual na ginagawa natin in determining the empirical formula. But, if hinahanap din ang molecular formula, at given ang molar mass, of course, kapag molecular formula, laging given ang molar mass, meron tayong pwedeng gawin para hindi tayo masyado mahirapan. So, ang gagawin na lang natin is, we're going to get the percent ng bawat element doon sa given na molar mass. So, for example, si carbon. So, 504. 0.42. Times 42.857%. So, ang lumabas sa kanya ay 216.1793. Alalahanin, kinuha lang natin yung percent. So, that means the value, or I mean the unit, will still be grams per mole. For hydrogen... So, 504.42 times 6.349%. This equal to 32.0256 grams per mole. Next, for oxygen naman, 5.4. 504.42 times... 50.794%. It is equal to 256.2151 grams per mole. Ngayon naman nakuha na natin yung percent ng bawat element doon sa molar mass. Ang susunod natin gagawin is i-divide natin siya sa kanyang atomic weight. So for carbon, it is 12.01 grams per mole. Alalahanin ng atomic weight ay kinukuha sa periodic table. For hydrogen, it is 1.01 grams per mole. For oxygen, it is 16 grams per mole. Ngayon naman, since divide siya, at magkapatao sa lang unit, so makakansal yung grams per mole, that means your final answer will have no unit. So, unahin na natin si oxygen divided by 16. Ibig sabihin, ang lumabas ay 16 yung kay oxygen. Next naman, si hydrogen is 32.0256 divided by 1.01. .01. It is equal to 31.71 or 32. 33, I mean. Sorry, 32. Next naman, si carbon, 216.1793. Divided by 12.01, this equal to 18. So that means si carbon I 18, si hydrogen I 32, si oxygen I 16. Ngayon naman, using this uh, method, ang una mo makukuha ay molecular formula. Kapag ginamit mo yung method na ito, using the molecular weight, of the substance, kapag hinanap ang molecular formula, ang unang mong kukuha ay ang molecular formula.
So parang nabaliktad compared doon sa dati nating ginagawa. Now, how will we determine ang kanyang empirical formula? Mag-iisip na lang tayo ng number na pwedeng i-divide sa lahat. So, sa tingin ko, ang pwedeng i-divide sa lahat dito ay 2. So, uh, 18 divided by 2 is 9. Hydrogen, 32 divided by 2 is 16. Oxygen, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So, ito na yung ating smallest whole number ratio or the lowest term. So, that means, ito na ang ating magiging empirical formula. So, mas madali ngayon maghanap kapag, uh, kapag molecular formula ang hinahanap. Pwede natin makuha ang molecular formula at empirical formula. Okay, so that is our final answer.